Hi guys, so before I start this video, I just want to let you guys know, I actually made this video about two months ago, but I thought it'd be a good opportunity to let you guys in on an idea I had in January, and I still want to go ahead with this, I've just hadn't had the time, but I, as soon as I get back from my honeymoon, this is one of my priorities to actually get done. Uh, this video actually talks about more about my backstory, and then I want to go into making a full series on how to get into the content, content creation world, and um, give you guys the opportunity on, on knowing all the little things like settings, everything to do with everything in the content creation world from settings, building communities, and all the programs I use. So guys, um, I hope you enjoy the video. It's, um, like I said, a couple months old, but it's still, I think, a really good information pack for uh, where I came from and how I got into this whole world that is uh, content creation. So guys, I hope you enjoy the video. Hi guys, this is Pat Steely and welcome to the first of a series of videos I'm gonna make about streaming, how to get into streaming, the stuff you're gonna need to know and need, everything in between, like the tips, the tricks, and ways we can help you become a content creator. I'd like to start out the first video being about my backstory. Uh, it's gonna be about a series of 14 to 15 videos after this video, going into all the depths of streaming and the content creation world. But I think it's a good idea that I actually lead in with a bit of information about myself, the passion and the reasons why I became a content creator. So you can understand how it all came to fruition and what has now led into my dream and passion being content creation. So without further ado, let's crack straight into it. So effectively as a child, I was always around video games. So it was Commodore 64s and all these old school like Atari and all that. But my gaming passions like uh, on PC didn't really begin until I started playing Half-Life. Now Half-Life uh, was the original reason what made Counter-Strike become real. So effectively, uh, Counter-Strike is a modification of Half-Life and back then I used to play a game called Adrenaline Game, which was a mod of Half-Life. Now, Half-Life uh, Deathmatch was very competitive. It was probably one of the best first-person shooters of its time. I don't really know if any other games really compete compared to it, but I know a lot of uh, people at a time really use Half-Life as a benchmark of what was actually a first-person shooter that was great. At the same time, I was also playing a lot of Diablo 1, and, and this is where my real passion for gaming began. These are the days, right, when I was pretty much going around on a skateboard. I, I remember going to uh, my cousin's house. I would literally have my computer case under my arm while skateboarding down the road to head up to Melbourne. I was actually get a train to Melbourne, skate to his house once I got to Melbourne, and then I would, uh, yeah, visit him, carry my computer, then I, so I could go land at his house. And then we used to always go to these random land parties and that. It was it was, it was heaps of fun. Gaming when I was younger was it was an experience more than just you know playing in the computer behind your house behind the, the monitor at your house. But yeah, so pretty much I started off playing Half Life. There was a lot of CS 1.4 and 1.6. They were like the really good old days. Uh, when CS Source came out, there was these uh, cool mods as well, like the Warcraft mod and uh, there was like an RPG mod and there was some really cool stuff that was developed in that. This was like the innovative dream of all gaming for that time uh, because everyone was always creating new ideas. The innovation in this era of gaming was absolutely amazing. And this is when World of Warcraft really kicked in. I'm not afraid to say this, I was absolutely addicted to World of Warcraft. If, I, if you think I play a lot of Escape from Tarkov now, my World of Warcraft day was were nuts. I actually lost a girlfriend over it. Uh, she's literally called me out one day said it's over you play world of warcraft too much pretty much like that was nearly word for word what she said uh so effectively that that was like a major turning point in my life i was like whoa i'm actually playing a lot of games here but I'll, that that's a bit of bit of uh i don't know the darker times of my gaming experience i guess but during this period there was a lot of really cool stuff going on uh land parties were really vibrant uh people would you know go to a land party on the weekend where a clan would host the land so one of the ones I remember that was uh, quite well was Pov uh, Sma uh, Smash Up, which effectively their clan name was P Prisoners of Violence or Pioneers of Violence, I think it was. And effectively, if you were win one of the competitions at that land, you effectively got to smash a CRT monitor with a sledgehammer. Like we're talking the old school CRT monitors. Now, if you tried to do that in today's day and age, it would literally be an OHS nightmare. There'd be glass going everywhere. You'd have to wear these goggles and all this safety gear, you'd never get away with it. Like, no clan would take the responsibility to, of maybe killing a 14-year-old kid with some glass to the eyeballs. So thankfully, uh, those days are probably done and dusted, but there were definitely some fun days. Um, but during that period, I, I eventually moved on to a game called EVE Online. If anyone's into space games, they're going to know that one straight away. Uh, it's pretty much the most open world, I don't know what you call it, open universe uh, space game. It's really cool. 
But yeah, that almost pretty much even online, a bit of World of Warcraft led up to when I joined the military. So back in 2009, I joined the army in the Australian army for uh, eight years full time, where I was in the infantry. I, I effectively spent uh, a quarter of my time in Southeast Asia. I studied with the army to become an Indonesian linguist as well. So not only was I in the infantry, uh, I spent about two years in Southeast Asia, mostly in Indonesia and Malaysia, with some time in Thailand and Singapore as well. Uh, here, uh, I learned a lot of skills that I still hold dear to me today, but it was also a very difficult time in my life. Anyone who hasn't joined the military, or I'm sure most people know someone who's been in the military, it, it's seriously not just, yeah, you know, rock up to work, nine to five kind of job. I spent hundreds of days away a year. Like an average year was somewhere between 100 and 150 days away from home where I didn't sleep in my own bed. I was sleeping on rocks in the middle of nowhere, doing training exercises. Uh, thankfully and unluckily, I, it depends on how you look at it. I didn't serve any time in the Middle East. Um, I say that in a way that I, a lot of people go, why is it unlucky? Well, imagine training for a job that you you, you know, you're really passionate about and you're really driven with, but you never actually get to do your job. Um, so that's where it's unlucky, but at the same time, I, I probably, you know, could have, I might have dodged a bullet because of it. But the army was definitely a difficult time physically and mentally for my body. Um, there was times in Malaysia where I was in the middle of a jungle, you know, it'd be 3 a.m. in the morning, you'd be on picket watching for an imaginary enemy that you know is not coming. Uh, leeches are biting you, rain's pissing down, you can't see more than half a meter in front of you. Your mate's trying to smoke a cigarette in the middle of a, a in a container because he's not allowed to get the not allowed to be seen smoking at night on picket. It's like it's that kind of shit where you just like you remember it, you laugh about it, but you don't want to do it again. But honestly, it was a, an amazing time and it was really really good for me uh, as a person to develop, particularly to becoming an adult. I don't really ever suggest anyone joining the army anymore uh, if they're really passionate about it i say go for it but overall it's a very demanding job on your body and your soul <laughs> and effectively it, it, it's what led to me leaving the army i pretty much could have spent the rest of my life in the army i, I actually really did enjoy the majority of times but uh, i got a shoulder injury effectively both my shoulders are slightly slightly damaged at the moment and uh, the job satisfaction really wasn't there unless you're really doing your job at the time It's it's just one of those jobs where it can be quite painful to be doing such a large amounts of time away from home But not being able to actually do your job properly So eventually I got to that point where I, I had to bite the bullet and say hey Is it is this really what I want to do and uh, you know, I was close to 30 actually I think I just turned 30 and I decided I was like that's it. It's time for me to get out so I uh, in 2017, in October, the very first of October, I quit the army. It was probably the most daunting time of my life, to be honest. Um, in the lead up to there, I, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, so I actually decided I'd save some money. And I'll take three months. Three months where I'm not going to work at all, and I was going to play computer games, I'm going to go fishing. I moved out to a little country town in, in South Australia called Wallaroo. It's an awesome fishing town, and I'll literally do nothing. So... I, I moved out to this place. I had my uh, well, she wasn't my fiance at times. She was my girlfriend. Uh, she had a job out there, which was really handy. And I spent the next three months forcing myself not to work. Now I'm a bit of a workaholic, so it's working is kind of in my in my genes and DNA to just constantly want to do something. So taking days off just to go fishing was was really difficult for me. But uh, I started actually uh, streaming very soon after. I think my first stream was the 9th of October. And this stream pretty much started because uh, two reasons, really. The first one was all my mates were either married, have kids, full-time job, or don't play computer games anymore. So I'm a 30-year-old man who wants to play computer games but has no one to play computer games with. And also to build a following. Now, I've always had a passion for uh, outdoors and adventure. Uh, mo most of my adult life, I've either been really passionate about climbing mountains, volcanoes, getting outdoors, seeing the world, and I'm very, very passionate about doing that stuff. For about the last five years, I've actually been planning this trip to Europe, where in 2020, which is next year now, it's actually coming up quite quick. Uh, the plan originally was to travel six months around Europe, climbing the highest peak of every country, and breaking a Guinness World Record doing it. Uh, so I was thought, while I'm doing that, I'm gonna film a documentary, and that was that's the, still the plan, really. I'm still gonna film a documentary, but uh, I thought it'd be cool if I could say get a thousand followers before I got to Europe. So 
I could have a thousand people, uh, sorry, possibly a thousand people keen on partaking in this adventure with me. Never did I ever dream that I'd be where I'm sitting right now. Uh, my, my Twitch channel is absolutely blown up. My YouTube's cranking like crazy. And, and the amount of support that I've received over the past 12 months has been insane. Um, but effectively, that is why I started streaming. Um, I never I never even really watched streams before, to be honest. Like, I knew who Shroud was. My cousin used to always talk about Shroud. Oh, Shroud's got, you know, a gazillion subs. And, you know, he, he does a, you know, 15 kill raid on PUBG. I think he got like a 30 kill raid one time that I watched with my cousin one night. And I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, I could play PUBG and stream and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, effectively, I saw this game called Escape from Tarkov, and I was really keen to play it. And I thought it'd be a good idea if I streamed it as well. Um, and yeah, it just, it, it really just started from there. So initially for the first four months and, and because of that period where I said I wasn't going to, uh, work, I didn't treat this like work at all. I was literally just like, all right, I'm going to play some, uh, computer games. So I'm going to stream today. I was very inconsistent, had no real pattern plan. I was just playing computer games for about, from about October till, uh, end of January. I was literally just play whenever I felt like it and not consistent at all. Uh, also during this time towards the end I needed to get a job because obviously I need some sort of income I signed up and became a, a member of the um, Metropolitan Fire Service which in the country uh, they do have some paid positions and I was in a paid position where effectively I was paid uh, per call out and also to do training each week and I was a paid firefighter which was an awesome opportunity I met some really cool people and for me leaving the military and if anyone is listening to this that is in the military that's leaving I highly suggest trying to get uh, a job or a part of a, a friendship group that is not military because most of my friends are still in the military or ex, uh, ex army and you kind of get that whole military mind pattern and it's very very difficult to leave like uh, even some of the words i still use today uh, are words that are only military used words like i don't know my intent and shit like that like you don't want to hear that stuff like you know i just want to go do stuff you know so that kind of stuff is, is really important. And for me, it was it was an amazing opportunity to become part of the Fire Brigade. And it was a dream that I had since I was a kid, really. But yeah, so uh, after January, it was coming to a close. I was away with my, at that uh, finally at that point, my fiance. We were traveling around the east coast of Australia on holidays. And we were deciding what I should do with my life and what, what I should do with uh, the rest of, you know, the next couple of years leading up. And we decided, would it be possible if I could take streaming seriously and go full time? and you know build a following enough to support our lifestyle because you know we don't really have an expensive lifestyle like we live within our means and that's about it really but uh that was about the point where i decided hey well let's go let's take it serious i'm going to do six days a week i think i initially started on five actually five days a week i'm going to put youtube videos out every every day and 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 just take it really seriously and instantly after i started taking it seriously things started to get momentum. Now, unfortunately, I know a lot of people out there won't be able to do it. Uh, the amount of hours that I did, if they're already working a job as well, that's uh, more time consuming. If they've got families and all that, I totally understand that. And I will talk about that in the future. But for this, this is just the situation I'm in. So I had a really supportive, uh, or have a really supportive fiance. Uh, we're getting married in three weeks. And yeah, and so I took it seriously, and in about three day period, I learned how to use Adobe Premiere Pro, and not not to the point where I could make the most epic videos ever. And it was very time consuming at first. I'd be putting six to eight hours after my stream each day into making a YouTube video that was a ten to twenty minute video. The thing was, the skills I made over this period make it now that I can make a video that might have taken, you know, six hours in the past, I could probably do it in an hour or two, depending on what it is. And my skills in, in developing in this and my streamlining is very important to making everything a lot more faster so I could actually get this stuff out there. So that was pretty much the launch of my stream. And from there, I was just constantly trying to think of creative ideas, building an epic community, which I'm so thankful I've got. My community is absolutely amazing. Uh, they're just always supportive. I've got a really good mod team. And, and, and this was pretty much how it all begun. And in, in a matter of, I think, three to four months after I took it serious, I think it was the end of May, I became a Twitch partner. And by the end of the year, um, I was nominated for a breakout creator of the year for Australia. And that was just mind blowing as well. And I won the award, which I still don't believe. I think uh, there's some absolutely amazing quality content that was in that same category as me. I think it just, like I said, my community is amazing and they just voted their hearts out, I think. So 
I'm really appreciative of that. But that pretty much gets me up to the point where I, I am now. So I have taken this really seriously. Unfortunately, about two, three months ago, uh, my fiance's contract got uh, cancelled out where we were out in this, the country and they wanted her to move to the city. And unfortunately, that meant I had to quit my firefighter job. So instead of you know probably spending an extra 10 to 20 hours a week working with the fire brigade, I now am streaming full time. So it's unfortunate because I was doing something I was really passionate about. I, I miss it. I, if we moved out to the country, I'd still sign back up. They already said that they'd take me back if I uh, moved back out there. But it's given me the opportunity now. I put every single minute of my day into this uh, into this experience that I'm doing. And I'm really excited to see where the future will go. Uh, I'm planning at the moment to really work on building up my YouTube channel and make uh, plenty of videos, including this guide series, that are going to hopefully help a lot of other uh, content creators out there or aspiring, inspiring, inspiring content creators to learn some stuff, some of the t tips and tricks that I've picked up over the months there's a lot of mistakes that people make and I, and I made them too and I really hope that the information that I can uh, put out over this next series over the next I think that we've got about 14 videos planned and there's probably going to be more on, on that uh, people can figure out how to make their stream what they want it to be build up a community and hopefully be successful in whatever they want to do whether it be YouTube creation Twitch creation podcast whatever it is because honestly since leaving the army this job has been one of the most hardest working things I've ever done, but I think it's because I've been so passionate about it that it's been uh, so successful for me as a person, not just uh, as, a, as a, a financial gain, but also as a, a happiness thing. I've, this is one of the happiest I've ever been. I, I get so excited every day to wake up and work for myself and play computer games and talk to the community and, and meet exciting new faces every day. It's one of those things where I know uh, it's not for everyone, and it's not. It's, it's sometimes it's it's not going to actually happen for you. And I, I don't want to. I don't want to lie here and say, oh, everyone can do this. It's not. This is a very difficult and cutthroat industry, and some of the simplest mistakes will cause the biggest uh, upsets for you because it could totally set your stream in a downward spiral. And that's a fear of mine. And I think that's a healthy healthy fear to have to always make sure you're not too complacent in what you have. So I don't want to ramble on too much more, but what I will say is, um, guys, if you're very if you're interested in this series at all, um, feel free to put as many comments and questions down in the comments below. In the future videos, there's going to be heaps on every single thing about streaming. That feel free to hit me up on my live stream or in the comments. I'm more than happy to help as much as possible. I know there's a lot of uh, really confusing things out there in the streaming world like streaming etiquette what can i ask for and what can i like you know what should i say to this person or oh, it's got like a big host what should i do all that kind of stuff i want to try and cover as much of it as possible because i i see a lot of things um these days and i'm by no means at all guys am i an expert in this field at all i'm literally just a, a really passionate guy who likes to help people so if i can help some of you guys that would be great but to finish up, guys, uh, I actually did a podcast this morning as well with a, another streamer, uh, Geekser from Canada, and I actually had a, it was about an hour and a half podcast, and I talk about a lot of the experiences of content creation and life itself. I highly suggest I'll put the link down below to his uh, Twitch channel and the the actual link to the podcast. If you guys want to learn something about creation, definitely go over to uh, him. He talks to a lot of large content creators, Twitch partners, and uh, any any sort of uh, content creation field as well and def definitely get on board with that he's a really cool dude you'll learn a lot there but if you're interested in this like this video subscribe for future content this series is going to be a lot of fun for me to make because it's going to help me refine my skills and hopefully pick up some of yours if you're new or old to the whole content creation thing and lastly guys i'll see you next time